I'm Mike Costello, and I'm here with Dr. Iris Freelander. And in the next few minutes, we'd like to talk to you about choice. The choices you make in your life, the choices that we all make in our lives, determine the quality and the fiber of our being. In New Thought Metaphysical Philosophy, we say so often that we live in our minds and not in the world. And that means that the way that we think, the things that go on in our minds and the dynamic of our mind action creates the environment, the life, and the reality that we experience. We all make choices in so many ways, but we make them often unconsciously, don't we, Iris? Yes, we do. And perhaps that's the best way to do it to make them unconsciously because our subconscious then is kicking in and helping us decide. And the worst thing anyone can ever do, I think, is to think, oh, I made the wrong choice because we can flow with whatever choice we make and learn from it. And sometimes perhaps that's, supposed, that's what we're supposed to be doing. And absolutely. And the choices that we make really in the way that we think determine how it is the experiences of life impact our existence. Yes. And very often we will agonize over a choice and that's okay. But we need to then release it when we make the choice to release it and not worry about the other what ifs, but just to go on with that decision. And when we do, then we put our energy into the project at hand, to the decision we've made, instead of scattering our energies in indecisive thinking. Mm -hmm. And of course, energy is a reality of life. And when we have and make negative choices uh, or have negative thoughts and feelings, uh, we are creating energy that is really more exhaustive than the positive <laughs> aspects of life. Yes, it is. And we it's been described that we have so much, a certain number of units of energy entering our bodies, and it wouldn't matter what system we use for measuring, but we do have a certain amount of energy. And so if we send it all out in indecisiveness or in wishing what might have been, or or, or any negative thinking, then we don't have the energy left to uh, create um, success mm -hmm. in our choice. Yeah, the choices that we make, so often we do make unconsciously. And ideally, we need to get to a point in life where the subconscious mind is really the companion of the conscious mind so that when we do have circumstances and situations in life, we're making right choices. But until we get to that point, we really need to be vigilant and aware of, the, of how it is our mind is acting and reacting to life because so often uh, we become either negative or positive thinkers. And as we become and make those negative choices in terms of our way of thinking, our entire life is colored by that, by that thought process. Yes, well, I read a story that was quite interesting about a man who had a near-death experience. And in his near-death experience, the angel of destiny said to him, would you like to see what might have been? And of course he said yes. And so the, that was shown to him what would have happened if he had made different choices at different times in his life. But he could see that uh, it wouldn't matter either way. He would still learn and grow. And the choices he made might not have been the ones he would have made if he had known how they turned out. But still, that's what he needed for his soul's growth. And so if we look at life in that way, I think it makes it a, a life a lot more fun. It makes it more fun, and it also creates within us a sense of responsibility, yeah. a responsibility for the quality of our life. And it makes it a, a decision that we make and that we participate in, as opposed to believing that there are so many external forces <laughs> that are making choices for us. And I think in many cases, people believe that there are circumstances and situations beyond their control that are controlling and and choosing the direction in which their life is moving. But in truth, we all choose to be where we are and we choose to move in the way that we choose. And that ultimate responsibility of choice is ours. That's true. And we have to take that responsibility. If we don't use self-responsibility, we're not living up to what we came into life to do. Isn't that true? Very true, very true. And each of the life experiences that we have bring to us the lessons that we need to have. So often we talk about life as the school of the soul or the school of the being. And so it's the lessons that we need to learn and the choices that we need to make in order to learn those lessons that bring us the, the reality of life that we, that we experience. Yes, I think when we read about the how the angelic beings help us and assist us, we know that they're with us all the time, and we have a, we each have a guardian angel, and that guardian angel is right there, and so are lots of other angels to help us. 
And when we're attuned to divine reality and not just so clutched up in our uh, conscious mind, then we're living from that point. And th they can even tell us how, uh, I know Dr. Caroline Mace, who's a wonderful uh, medium, psychic um, uh, medium, well, she's not exactly a medium. Uh, mm -hmm. She says that our guardian can even help us choose what fruit we're choosing in the, in the market. And she's a spirit, uh, Caroline Mays is a spiritual intuitive or a medical intuitive. Mm -hmm. And she sees clearly on the inner planes and she sees very uh, clairvoyantly what we need to do. And, and she, she says, I don't do the lottery, I don't do other things, but I can see what's within you medically and what you need to do. And I think it's interesting that she feels that our guardian angel and other angels help us with the most minute decisions if we just allow it. And then that's when, we, when we're living from our, not our conscious mind, but our subconscious, we're able to attune ourselves to those divine beings who are there to help us. Mm -hmm. And the dynamic of, of conditioning and dealing with the subconscious mind is tremendously important because the conscious mind is always feeding the subconscious. And we need to be aware of the fact that we are conditioning and that we have all been conditioned through life. And we know from a psychological standpoint and sociological standpoint that we are conditioned uh, through the process of living and that that conditioning of our conscious mind has created what it is we experience in the subconscious. And that subconscious mind comes into our conscious mind whenever we need to make choices. Yes. And uh, whether we make them consciously or unconsciously, that subconscious uh, awareness comes into the conscious mind. Mm -hmm. That's why in New Thought philosophy we use so extensively affirmations mm -hmm. to condition or to create the subconscious mind and the dynamic of the subconscious mind behaving and remembering and reacting in a positive and affirmative way. Yes, and when we follow New Thought teachings, then we're more free and more open and we're more attuned to the to that uh, d divine inner planes. And when we do that, then we are living from our own higher aspect of being. And that's an important dynamic to understand that metaphysical New Thought philosophy encourages the dynamic of uh, self-responsibility and the understanding that we are creating our own reality and our own environment as we go through life through the dynamic of our mind, that we live in our minds and our minds project and our minds are the arena in which we live. We think so often that we live in the world, we live in Long Beach or we live in our home or our family or our relationships. And in fact, we do all of our living in our minds. Yes, yes, we live in our minds and not in the world. I've heard you say that so many times that it, it is um, very impressive because when we realize that, we make our decisions in a different way, don't we? We do. And a, a good part of the understanding or the teaching is to realize that making choices is a response, a personal responsibility, mm -hmm. an issue of personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. And regardless of what our faith tradition is or what our religion or our spiritual background is or what our psychological makeup is, we need to hold that uh, truth as being universal and understand that that is simply a reality. Yes, there's a lot of talk about take back your power, and you see that in story in articles now and different places. And we had our Wednesday night service. Uh, take back your power was the title, and it's uh, when we don't live from our own aspect of our own being, then we're giving away our power. When we don't make our own decisions, when we don't assume the self responsibility, and so very often we're just afraid of making the wrong decision, so we give away our power hoping someone else will make a better decision for us, which wouldn't be possible. We need to ask advice and ask for uh, different ideas and then mull those over, but to use our own inner guidance and our own make our own decisions. And that's what self-responsibility, of course, is. Mm -hmm. And right choices really come from what we uh, uh, speak of and teach of the uniting of our mind with divine mind. And that is to have right thinking and right choices coming to individuals because of the alignment of their mind, conscious and unconscious, or conscious and subconscious, with divine intelligence, whatever that is defined to be because of course we know that we deal at the center and and in our lives and in our counseling work with people from a variety of religious and spiritual backgrounds so we're not talking about changing religion or changing spiritual values but we are talking about principles that can transcend uh, religious boundaries and the dynamic of connecting 
our mind with divine mind or with with the presence of God, if you're more comfortable with that, people are more comfortable with that term, but the mind of infinite intelligence combined with our intelligence guides us to right choices. And those right choices require us and call us to think the right things in the face of circumstances and situations, whatever those circumstances and situations are. And one of the things that we know is we're not going to change the circumstance or situation. That's not what we're about. We're about changing the way people respond, the way people react, the way people feel about circumstances and situations. Yes. And you know and I know in our work how many people we've had who have been in serious crisis, who've had financial difficulties, health challenges, relationships that have ended, terminal illness, and a variety of other things. And the way that they think the choices that they make about how they think about that experience really determines the quality of their life in the midst of that experience. Yes, and if everyone would just look, if our audience would look at their own individual life and see how they've been happier when they've made their own choices and how they've been more miserable when they've not. Because we, as we assume self-responsibility, then we're more relaxed and comfortable within ourselves. And then we're more able to make our own decisions and then to live with them and to know that, well, again, there are no really, really wrong decisions. It's just that there are different choices. And that's the top topic today, choices. And right. isn't it wonderful that we have choices in life? We do absolutely have choice. And as we make those choices, those choices have consequences. Mm -hmm. And each thought and each choice brings a consequence that has to be met and dealt with. But the, the dynamic and the magnificent dynamic is that each choice creates another choice. <laughs> and so we can choose to change our way of thinking at any time that we choose. We can change our way of life any time that we decide to change the way that we think about life and choose to think about life. Yes, and life is indeed a series of choices. I volunteer in a thrift shop, and uh, there was a man who wanted to buy certain th items, and two items were priced separately. One was priced 50 cents, and one was priced a dollar. And he said, um, so he questioned that. And he was very adamant and vehement about his, uh, his, his questioning. And I didn't know what to say, so I said, well, life is a series of choices, isn't it? And that made him laugh. And then he bought several other items in the store because it made him laugh at himself mm -hmm. and at life itself because uh, it, w it wasn't anything to be upset about, but yet he found himself upset, and then he found himself laughing. And if we can remember in our daily life, when we're faced with, a, with any kind of crisis or with indecision, that life is a ser series of choices, and whatever choice we make, well, we, we will live with it happily. Mm -hmm. And that indecision is a choice, too. Yes. I think that's important to remember. And when we deal with people in counseling, we often find people that simply can't make a decision, can't make a choice. And yet, in fact, they are making a choice. Mm -hmm. And that choice is to make no choice mm -hmm. or make take no direction, and yet to accept the consequences of that choice. And it would be so much better in our life experience if we're making right choices and if we understand the personal responsibility that we have at all levels of our life, in mind, body, and spirit, all of those areas of our life to make right choices and to choose to think and to act and react in a positive and affirmative way. Mm -hmm. There's a young man who came to me recently for counseling and um, I gave him some things to think about and uh, he wanted more ideas given to him. So he said to me, do you have some friends that I could talk with um, to, to talk about my problem? And um, so I had to tell him, and it's really hard to tell anyone um, that they need to think, change their thinking. But I had to tell him, well, you have to assume your own self-responsibility. And if you spread your energy around with a lot of different people, what does it gain you? Because you can only make one choice. And so if you're going to talk with a lot of people, it's just going to confuse the issue. And I hated to say that because I thought it might upset him because it was his health. It was a health problem that he had. And But he laughed and said, you know, you've made me see that I have to just meet this head on right now. Mm -hmm. And so he didn't get upset. He did um, take that advice. And that's good advice for anyone who's facing indecision to know that, well, they just have to make their own decision. And the more people they talk with, the more frustrating and confusing the issue becomes. So it's best to just talk with one or two people or very, or, or none, but to just do it ourselves, make our own decision. And then we can go gingerly sometimes or we can go full speed ahead. But uh, if we can remember that when we talk with a lot of different people about a problem, 
We're going to add to our confusion. And also people need to be aware of the kind of people that they're talking to about the problems <laughs> because one of the things that we find so often is negative people often are surrounded by negative people. And mm -hmm. so if, if in fact the counsel that they are receiving is, is of a negative nature, then they're likely to respond and react in a very negative way. And so that it is an important reality that, that we come back to the issue of self-responsibility mm -hmm. and ultimately we need to make decisions mm -hmm. for ourselves and about ourselves. That's one thing we don't have a choice about. Ultimately we have to make our own decisions and if we use someone else's decision for our decision then we're treading on thin ice because they don't know all the ins and outs of, of any situation and also we can go to the inner planes in meditation and prayer and even ask in our dreams, you know, a lot of wonderful inventions have been given to the earth through men who followed their, their, their nightly dreams. Mm -hmm. not, not just their dreams for life, but their nightly dreams. And I understand that Edison is one who would take naps and then he would come up with a solution because it would come to him in his sleep. Mm -hmm. And then he, he could go on with his work and he did wonderful work. And that dynamic of mind-body-spirit connection is something that we see a lot in today's uh, literature and we see it on the spiritual side, we see it on the psychological side, we see it on the sociologic side. And uh, it's very much a reality that, uh, and, a, and a dynamic that people are not only interested in, but in today's mm -hmm. environment we're finding that by putting those three uh, parts of the person together, and treating the person in a holistic way, you know, that's a, also something that's very much in vogue again, uh, that uh, then right and positive choices can be made. Yes, and I can remember once years ago, I was in a, a line at lunch with a, at a luncheon. There was a young man, 17 years old, who was in front of me, and he said, um, I understand you've gone back to school, and what are you studying? And I said, oh, um, mind, body, and spirit. And he says, well, that just about covers it all, doesn't it? <laughs> Mind, body, and spirit does indeed cover it all. We'd like to pause at this point in the program and offer you the opportunity to receive some literature so that you can continue your study of the ideas and concepts that we're sharing. We would like to give you the opportunity to explore and discover in your own home the new thought teachings that this program is sharing with you by sending you a free copy of one of these booklets. Simply address your request to Confident Living at P.O. Box 7726, Long Beach, California, 90807. Whatever your dream, whatever your vision, you can reach it through Confident Living. Before the break we were talking about choices and uh, the fact that we do indeed live in our minds and not in the world and that it is our personal responsibility to make choices about the direction of our life, about how we respond to circumstances and situations and how we respond to our emotions and to the externals of our life. I guess in the last half of the program uh, maybe we could take a few minutes and talk to people about how it is they could really uh, create some techniques for making right choices. And I guess the beginning point as we think of new thought philosophy is that when choices need to be made, especially in life events, whether uh, I'm talking about major choices, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps a health challenge, perhaps a financial challenge, perhaps a change in work, a relationship, a change in life as we all experience them. And we all have all of these experiences. Uh, the, the beginning point of identifying the need to make a choice and then moving into the choice itself uh, begins by understanding and accepting where we are. And I think that needs to be uh, a beginning point for this discussion. And one of the things that we teach is living in the now and the importance of being in the present moment. If we're faced with a physical challenge, if we're faced with a work problem, if we're faced with a financial difficulty, if we're faced with a relationship, whatever the challenge is that comes into our life experience, we begin by accepting that that is where we are. And that's tremendously important, isn't it? Yes, it is. And if we don't do that, we're just stalling for time because ultimately we have to do that. We have to face up to those decisions and make them and um, it is, it's so interesting that there are so many different ways of making decisions. Uh, we can sleep on it. We can meditate on it and ask for answers. And if we do, we'll get our answers because we always, whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. If we pray for answers and then meditate or quiet 
to receive then the information. We will receive it. And um, then again, we've talked about going to other people for advice. If there's someone we really trust and we can talk with one person and help them have them give us ideas. And I know that in your counseling, you never give people the answers. You always help them. And I don't either. I don't say you need to do this, you need to do that. Because who knows what they need to do. They need to do what in their heart they know they need to do. So they can go different ways to come to a conclusion. But the bottom line is they always have to come to that conclusion themselves. And if they don't, they're not going to live uh, very happily with it, with their choice. The choice has to be personal, and it has to be owned. And uh, with the ownership, we have to take responsibility. And with that, we have to take responsibility for our lives. And yeah. therein lies the key. Because for most of us, or for many of us, it is extremely difficult for us to look at our lives, especially when we're in the midst of crisis, uh, in the midst of loss, in the midst of pain, and say, this is where I am, and this is where I've brought myself. Mm -hmm. And that is really the beginning point of making some positive and affirmative uh, choices for change. Mm -hmm. And uh, that goes back to living in the present moment and accepting the circumstance of the situation and accepting the fact that we really are responsible for ourselves. And that's not taking anything away from God. It's not taking anything away from the, the, the religious faith that we have. But it is really putting the reality of our own personal responsibility as persons on our own shoulders and uh, saying to ourselves that we need to make choices Choices. We need to, to accept those, uh, the consequences of those choices. We need to live with them. And if we're making bad choices and if we're making wrong choices, then we need to change the choices that we're making. And that's the wonderful thing that is, is true about life. We can always change the direction. And we begin by changing our way of thinking. We don't begin by changing behavior. We change our way of thinking. Yeah. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing to know that we can go home to God anytime we like. And when we do, we are tuning ourselves to that divine being, and then we can make our choices more fully. And uh, some people do that without even realizing that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And today, just in the last few minutes that we have, well, we could talk a little bit about meditation. We try always to speak about meditation. But in the Western uh, philosophy, both religious and, uh, and spiritual, uh, there is a hesitancy uh, to get involved in meditation sometimes just because we don't understand it. But meditation and imagery, guided imagery, and so often in our counseling, we help people move through uh, the, the decision of choice through guided imagery and meditations and altered states of consciousness, which has sounds really uh, like <laughs> something special, but it's not, is it? No, that's true. It isn't. And there's a great proportion of the world's population, med the people meditate, and they believe in the power of meditation. And it's in, it seems that in this country, people are less apt to meditate or to think it's strange. Isn't that un unusual? I think it's our Puritan work ethic that we brought in and the Puritan, uh, Puritan religious ethic that was brought in when this country was formed and we're a new country. So um, it seems to have gone too far in one direction. But you know, it's been said that one reason the Dalai Lama had to leave Tibet was so that would be, uh, energy would be integrated throughout the earth. And that, that makes sense, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And the magnificence of the choice that's been made for us and that we make is in, in celebrating diversity and yeah. the reality that today we understand many things that we didn't understand and we're involved in many things we weren't un involved in 20 or 30 years ago. And certainly meditation and imagery are, are a, a focal point of new thought philosophy and a focal point that we use in our work to bring people to making right choices. Well, a lot of people think that meditation is a mystery, but it is not a mystery. It's just quieting oneself, centering oneself, and being attuned to that inner aspect of being. And when we do that, it's so simple, and yet people make um, a mystery of it. So we'd, I'd like to just suggest to everyone who listens that they just try that. And it's not a big deal. No. And it's centering the mind. Yes. And really what we're talking about is mind dynamic. Everything that we talk about is the, is the merging of spirituality with mind science or mind awareness. And that consciousness uh, reality and the consciousness teaching is really what can guide us and direct us to make the choices that we need to make in our lives. Yes. And if, every, if those who listen to us would just re realize that Choices are wonderful. Choices are not a problem. Choices are not something we have to face with the dread. 
it's a wonderful thing to know that we do have choices. And as you said earlier, when we make the wrong choice or a choice that we don't want to live with, we have the privilege of, ma of changing that choice. Mm -hmm. And we can always move in a new or different direction, and that's the magnificence of life, and that's the challenge of life, to be able to make right and good choices in the face of bad circumstances, in the face of, of uh, rather negative choices. And as you said so well at the beginning of the program, there are no really bad choices. There are <laughs> simply choices. That's yes. true. And we're told, you mentioned earlier, keep your consciousness, bring, keep your consciousness in the present. To keep the consciousness in present time means you're not sending your energies out in regrets or in what might have been or in any negative aspect of, of being. We're just keeping our consciousness in present time. And when we do that, we can make wiser choices every time. And choosing to live in the present moment yes. and choosing to live in this reality of this moment always keeps us centered and always keeps us where we need to be. Yes, and if we can remember that and just uh, rem remember to keep our consciousness in present time, uh, it's life is more fun. It's more of a fun challenge than a than a, a negative challenge. Mm -hmm. And life is meant to be fun, and yeah. we are meant to be happy and positive and affirmative people. And so often in our life experience, we fail to have the joy, fail to have the happiness, fail to have the empowerment, fail to have the strength because of choices that we've made. And in the last few minutes, Dr. Freelander and I have been sharing with you concepts and ideas of Confident Living. We hope that you found this information useful and we look forward to seeing you next time. This program is a community outreach of Christ Church. Dr. Mike Costello speaks each Sunday morning at 11 a.m. and Dr. Iris Freelander speaks on Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. at the church. On Sunday evenings at 6 p.m., there is a meditation and healing service. Come and join us. You will be warmly welcomed.